Praise the Lord. As you had it read in the uh, prophetic focus for the month, this is one of those threefold mandates that I received from the Lord. Get back home and make my people rich. Many have been taken out of the dung hill and made to sit in the palaces today by diligently hearkening to what God said for me to tell them and observing to do them and things opened up. There is nothing magical there. First, let me say this. How prophetic is the word of God? How prophetic is the word of God? Everything God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 31, God saw. When God speaks, the world he speaks creates his content. That's why they call it the more sure word of prophecy. You believe it, it's created. It's created. It's created. And God saw everything that God said. And behold, it was very good. Verse 31. And God saw everything that God said. And behold, it was very good. Genesis 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that God said. <laughs> and behold, it was very good. God said it. God saw it. Peter described the word as the most sure word of prophecies. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shines in the place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Now, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, but holy men of God. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they were all thus said the Lord. That's what you find there. Every prophecy of scripture is God prophesying to his people. He calls it the more sure of prophecy. The more sure word of prophecy. The more sure that it is more I mean it's more guaranteed than any prophetic word from any prophet on earth. So it's not a storybook. Stop reading stories. Seek to assess the mysteries of the kingdom. And the vital mystery of the world is its prophetic nature. Can I tell you what I mean? I saw at the age of 16, a year after I got born again, that I've been redeemed unto God as a priest and a king to reign on the earth. It, it sank into my spirit. Every time this small boy wants to go out, he will check, will the king go out like this? It entered me. It was me God spoke to. It's not to us. He spoke to me. <laughs> he spoke to me. I saw in 81 the part of the just man as a shining light. It shines more and more. And I vowed against a better yesterday. It was me God spoke to. Proverbs 4 and verse 18. Revelation 5 and verse 10. Probekanarutas. It's prophetic. It's prophetic. I stepped out of poverty and uncertainty of the future. 1982, from this chapter 8, verse 18. March 22nd, we are in March again. Oh. 
82. And I screamed, Yea, I can never be poor. I had it. I embraced it. I knew the outcome. A ropata, a sokiteyo, break tanora. One day, this short man was declared the richest pastor in the world in a depressed economy. <laughs> My God. Without begging, without games, a red top picking, and not trying to sell. Is prophetic. Seek out of the book of the law and read. None of this shall fail. We read that earlier on, Isaiah 34, verse 16. Neither shall any want to meet. For my mouth it has spoken it, and my spirit has gathered them. It's a prophetic service, so don't mind me. I'm not bothered about notes or anything. If you can catch it today, you are true. You can catch it today, you are true. The future I'm working in now, and the one now waiting me, I saw it from the book that is coming. I saw it. I saw it. No, no, it just happened. No, I saw it was coming. <laughs> I saw it. From the eyes of scriptures, I saw it. This was what the judge was said before him. I saw it. I saw it coming. see the great plans of God coming true in your life, both in the now, in the future, in your generations coming after you, in the name of Jesus. Let's look at three or four fundamental prophetic words for the end time church. Number one, the end time church is ordained a church of multitudes, 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 multitudes. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established upon the top of the mountains, shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Micah chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3. Repeated verbatim. The church of multitudes. The last day began in the days of the apostles. <laughs> and they filled the whole Jerusalem with their doctrine. You know, the disciples multiplied greatly. Almost the whole city gathered in church. And now we are towards the end. We are in the latest end of the latter days, sir. Eruption is God's ordination. And your church is one of those churches today on the earth experiencing the fulfillment of those prophecies. Church of multitudes. So it's not anybody's agenda and no devil can stop it. Let any devil just go to quiet. You, can, you come against it, you are grinded to powder, sir. Grinded forever. Grinded forever. Can any devil stop heaven's agenda? How? Can the creator silence the creator? Can darkness silence light? The end time church is a church of multitudes. 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 And it's happening all around the world today. Multitudes. You begin to see high palaces being built around the world. It's in fulfillment of heaven's agenda for the end time church. For the sake of time. The end time church is ordained to command supernatural wealth. And that day when I unleash my treasures, covenant practicing people shall be mine. I will distinguish them, Malachi 3, 17 to 18, as a man distinguished his own son that serves him. I will distinguish them. I will distinguish them. I will distinguish them. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Verse 18. 
For the day come that shall fall like an oval. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. And all the proud, don't mind Papa, what is he talking about? And all that do wickedly shall be stubble. The day that comes, you burn them off, leaving them with neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, shall send the righteous arise with healings in his wings. And they shall be growing up and going forth as fatted calves out of their stalls. Eram Bangala Takaluta, there is coming an economic war. I call it Holocaust. Terupa Krikanuta. The great will bite in their fingers. By the covenant people are singing a new song. Hallelujah. Come and give the Lord praise. Please be awake. It's not a church strategy for fundraising. God doesn't raise funds. He's the source of all good things. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. I don't raise funds. I want to raise you. Eklando. God told me 87, don't raise money. Ekankoto, raise men. God wants you raised. I didn't know you when God showed me this. I wasn't counting on you. Enoporotas. Krekoto Manos. Metianos. I got my last BTA to travel in my life. 86. I travel at will, wherever I'm traveling to, with resources available in my pocket. Without begging. We have not borrowed once. Please, he said, I want you to take note of the grace that's upon the Macedonian churches. Take note of the grace upon this church. What are they doing? You are already there. Ask yourself, what are we doing? We are just pushing the kingdom. Pushing the frontiers of the gospel. Praise God. And comply with the covenant terms of abundance. And God cannot but confirm his word. I want to believe. You have heard it. Rudo in the midst of their people. And the rich rule it over the poor. So the end time just for them for superfluous wealth. Hallelujah. That humbles the proud. Sir, those who are carrying fake money around, in no time, they be down to zero. Except God's word is not true. But covenant made financial giants will keep scaling new heights. New heights. New heights. No games, no gimmicks. Come awake. Come awake. Come awake. God is still raising the poor out of the dung hill. Come awake. Take your place. Come awake. Take your place. Come awake. Take your place. My prayer is that today will mark a new dawn in everyone's life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say so with me, God's word is prophetic. Is God speaking to me? If I will hearken diligently to his voice and observe to do what he says. God's integrity is com committed. God's integrity is committed to confirm his word in my life. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Lord, I diligently hearken today to your voice. I know you are here to speak to me. Speak to me, Jesus.
Let him that has ears hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. In Jesus' precious name, gateways to financial fortune. Is it an ambition? No. It's our inheritance. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake and my sake he became poor, that with his poverty might be made rich. So it's our heritage, it's not an ambition. It's not a crave for things. No. It's a revelation of our inheritance in Christ. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. Christ obtained for us a redemption, power, riches, wisdom, strength, glory, honor, and blessings obtained for us. Settled already. You know what I said? I've come that you may have life and have it more abundant. So wealth is not the ambition of some individuals. No. It's the heritage of every member of God's family. It's the heritage of the redeemed of the Lord. It's the heritage of believers. The older brother of the progress I never knew what belongs to him. He said, all the things I have, are they not yours? Well, you have been laboring like jackal <laughs> without a taste of it. I said, don't know, it's yours. So one can abide in his house for life without knowing what belongs to them. He got angry when the new, leader, the new arrival who has wasted his life on routers living came back and God was celebrating. What? You never gave me. No, you never connected with it. Can I have you say with me, wealth is my portion in redemption. It's my heritage in Christ. It's not my ambition. It's not my crave. It's my birthright. Jesus paid for it to bring me out of the dunghill and make me to sit in the palaces. But to work in financial fortune, the world of Job 22, 21 to 25 demands that we get acquainted with the truth regarding the terms of the covenant of abundance. To get acquainted, like acquainted now that I say with me, and you'll be at peace, thereby shall good come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. But I say, Lord, that puts me in command of it. And lay up his words in your heart. And you do it according to the set rules of scriptures. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. Get off your way. It doesn't work. My ways are higher than your ways. Come over here. Thou shalt put away iniquity from your tabernacle. It doesn't work by playing games. shall not lay up gold as dust. Fortune. Financial fortune. And the gold of offer as the stones of the blue. Yea, the almighty shall be thy defense. That is, you'll be protected against the wickedness of the wicked who is gnashing their teeth as they see you go up. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. That is nothing to fear if I'm the one making you. No devil cannot make you. Nothing to fear. I, I, I will deal with them without your permission. Nothing to fear. Psalm 1 to say, The wicked shall see your generational wealth and gnash with your teeth. The desire of the wicked shall perish. So it's not uh, what I, what's the matter. The matter is when God blesses, He secures the blessing. For the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich and has no sorrow. So if anybody is under any form of attack today by reason of God's good hand on your life, 
My God, the attack returns sevenfold to the sender. There's a law that puts the believer in command of God's financial fortune agenda. The covenant of abundance is a platform upon which we are empowered for wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. That's where God opened up my financial destiny. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God for it. You see, that giveth the power to get wealth. So God empowers people for wealth. If wealth were evil, God will not empower us for evil. No. Money is not evil. It's the love of money that is evil. For the love of money Is the root of all evils, not money. Otherwise, his eyes are pure to behold evil. And God said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord. It's the love of money that is evil, not money. Get up that religious blindfold. Of his fullness have we all received. Grace for grace. The silver is mine to be the later church. The later house and the gold is mine, said the Lord. Money cannot be evil. It's the love of money that is evil. The love of money can make a man kill his mother to make money, kill his son to make money, kill his wife to make money. The love of money. You are owing somebody and it's harassing you, you kill him for doing you favor to borrow you money. The love of money, the root of all evils. Armed robbers are all over in the night. Ten may go out, two may return. Then the remaining two will still look for more and go again. And then they die the following day. No. Love of money, the root of all evils. The root of all evils. All those devils engaging in the kidnapping business. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this year is declared your year of judgment. <laughs> The business people sponsoring them, I command your fountains to run dry. <laughs> you have made many parents weep, many spouses cry. You will cry sevenfold. <laughs> when blessings come from God, it makes rich. And it has no sorrow. It makes rich and it has no sorrow. You have stepped into the sorrow free realm of your life. Yeah. No more crying behind closed doors for you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So I define the covenant. God said to me, He said, My son David, from that scripture, my prosperity plan is not a promise. What? Because I came up in the days when we confess and possess. That's the faith we knew. And so it does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. What? I had it live from the mouth of God. As I began craving for God to show me what he showed Copeland. I was in a three-day fast. I had one of his books and that of his wife. Searching scriptures to know what did you show this man that is being manifested openly around the world. And then I met with God. Somebody's told is changing. So a covenant can be defined as a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms 
and sealed with an oath for delivery. I have these provisions for you if you are interested. Lord, I am interested. Then do what it commands. And as you do, you have committed my integrity to confirm it. God never forces his way on anyone's life. God never forces his way into any man's life. If you will really hearken to my voice. I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens, I will come. I can't break into your life without your permission. I'm not a thief. The shepherd goes through the door. Your heart is the door to your life. So without opening the door of your heart, God can't come in, sir. God can't come in. Enough. Don't say that again. No. You won't have it again. That's the meaning. Have it. My mentor, Dr. Copeland, said, David, don't tell me you learned this thing from me. You get it more from it than I did. And that's what happened to you. Amen. You will get more from this than I did. Amen. If you will diligently hacker. No games here. Oh, no games. No games. No games. No games. I love that scripture used during the offering. You have been faithful. Now have authority. We are not talking about what you hold in your hand. We are talking about the authority you have. The authority you have. You enter the three nations without transmission of cash. Aleppo wrote this authority. Come on, say authority. 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 Authority is far above possession. It commands possession at will. Tinosa, a clone break on up. A nan secoto. How do I it over 10 cities? Over 5 cities? Luke chapter 19, verse 17 to 19. To be empowered means to have authority. <laughs> so the covenant confers authority of a national fortune on covenant people. We saw one that's the only building of this tabernacle. And they will tell me they need 40 million tomorrow. I say, go ahead. <laughs> Amen. And when I say, go ahead, it means go ahead. And then tomorrow it came. No telephone call. That. No chat with anybody. We need 28 million next tomorrow. Go ahead, my friend. <laughs> At a point, the people in charge said, sir, can we concentrate on this building and leave it academy? I said, which one can you do? And is the man doing a complaining? God, is he complaining to you? The moment you say we will do this one, that means you, know you have ability to do it. You don't have anything in your hand. Come and say authority. 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 Yeah. authority. 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 This church started tithing 87. Opanica, Creconia, Ezosia, 99. Authority sat down. Authority sat down, sir. Oh my God. <laughs> Authority. We command fortune by covenant authority. Covenant authority. You don't know racism by covenant authority as confirmed by God. And authority is in degrees. Authority is in degrees. Somebody should have just changed. Yeah. As a seed of Abraham, you are ordained to be a blessing to your world, not your family, to your world, to your world, to your world. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God swore it to Abraham. And he wants to bless us after the order of Abraham. So we are redeemed 
to be a blessing to our world. Not to our family, my wife and I and children, my relations, nephew, cousin, and all that stuff, but to the world. Ah. Mm. I heard God say to me, and you shall learn unto nations. 1981. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 6. But thou shalt not born. I bless us have ordained, as I promise you. You shall lend unto nations, but thou shalt not born. Your story is changing. Yeah. Psalm 89, verse 34. The word says, My covenant will I not break. No, alter the things that are going forth out of my lips. Things are hard, can't break the covenant. Things are tough, can't break it. Things are rough, can't break it. You better get started from where you are. The covenant that empowers for wealth anchors on the mystery of seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. Genesis 8 and verse 20 to 22. And no yard and not unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord. And what happens? And the Lord smelled a good sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cross the ground anymore for man's sake. The imagination of man's heart is evil from the from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I've done. Now why the earth remaining? I establish this covenant with you. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. And cold and heat and summer and winter. And day and night shall not cease. That's the anchor law that launches believers into their heritage of financial fortune. If you hate that law, you can't be there. If you scorn that law, yeah, yeah. You can't get there. It's a game. You won't get there. That is, seed and have seed and harvest means sowing and reaping. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six to seven. But this I say. He which sows sparingly shall live sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall also live bountifully. What am I talking about? Verse 7. He said, Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. So sowing is giving. Not of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Not grudgingly. God is not in need. The poor you are trying to help, God has lineups outside you that will bring them out. You don't have anything to brag about. You don't help somebody else will help him. What is seed time and harvest? Say with me, giving and receiving. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. He said, You Philippians also know also that in the beginning of the gospel, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. So, seed time and harvest is all about giving and receiving. You are not entitled to receive without first giving. It is your giving that commands your receiving. If you are not interested in giving, you are not entitled for receiving. Come on now. It's an as you do that. My God shall supply all your needs. I mean, his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You all know that our needs are not just financial. Amen. All your needs. Whatever brings you sorrow, we take care of it. All your needs. All your needs. Unto riches and glory. All your needs. Have you not heard? Blessed is the man that considers the poor. The Lord shall deliver him in the day of trouble. Is that not a need? Can money deliver you in the day of trouble? Can money deliver anybody in the day of trouble? 
All your needs. All your needs. Joe was a giver. A sold out giver. He said, have you not built an edge around him, around his house, and around all that he has on every side? But Job never knew. He was living in fear. Every covenant practitioner has an edge of fire around him. My God. Edge of fire around him. I had Ben Hinn shared a story yesterday or sometime, and then uh, they were flying, and the fuel got exhausted, and pilot announced, we are bound to crash, and he started laughing. <laughs> it's the Holy Ghost laugh that just came on, he started laughing, and truly, the plane crash landed at one airport, it was rolling and rolling. But he's alive today. He was laughing. There's an edge around your life. You are not a job. You, now you are aware of it. The covenant practice entitles you to an edge of fire around your life. Around your life. Anybody that comes against you is broken to pieces. If it is God blessing you, he keeps sorrow off your shoulders. Sorrow off your shores. You never suffer a downward trend anymore in your life. <laughs> My God shall supply all your needs on the basis of giving your engagement with the law of giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. When it's time, tell me we just continue next time. Praise God. What is Seed time and harvest. Scattering or distributing and increasing. There is he that scattereth. He has more. There is he that withholds more than he requires and intends more to pay newly. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. The libra soul shall be made fat. And he that waters him say be watered on to. There is he that distributes and yet increases. So the word says, child them that are rich among you, not to be high-minded. First Timothy 6, verse 17 to 19. Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who has given us all things which need to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, willing to distribute, ready to communicate, thereby laying in store for themselves against the time to come that them lay hold on eternal life. <laughs> there is it that scatters and yet has more. Our ever increasing heritage requires that we keep distributing of his resources in our lives to keep increasing in his blessings. Robalis Katekrodiash. Hmm. There was a man, they call him the rich fool. And there's no such man in this church. <laughs> Amen. He was just accumulating. We never distribute. Because a such man is not worthy to leave. Over. Time up. <laughs> and so is everyone that's rich in this world, but it's not it towards God. Chapter 12. Of Luke and verse 21. And it's not only towards God, it's an accumulator, not a distributor. And so is he that laid up treasure for himself, and it's not rich towards God. And it's not rich towards God. And things of God don't bother him. He just cuts down his life for nothing. You know something? A man can survive without food and water for 40 days. But can you survive constipation for 40 days? Max one week. Everything inside you is turned to poison. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You stay refreshed as a giver. You stay refreshed as a giver. Mm.
what is seed time and harvest? Given that entitles you to being given. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Shall man be brought to bring to your bosom. I will orchestrate it. I will organize it. In response to your giving life. Luke 6, 38. He that giveth to the poor lendeth unto the Lord. Proverbs 19, verse 17. And that which has given shall be given back to him. He that giveth to the poor shall not lack. <laughs> Proverbs 28, and verse 27. Shall not lack, but he that hideth his face shall have many a cause. Now we are there. But tithing is the capital law. Tithing is the capital law that enables the believer's access to the open heaven order of blessings. Open heaven order of blessings. You know whatever comes from above is above all. So you become an amazement and a wonder to many. David said in Psalm 91 and um, verse Psalm 71 and verse 7 I'm as a wonder to many but thou art my strong refuge. You become a wonder to many because you are Operating with the blessing that come from heaven, heaven. He said, bring all the tithes to my storehouse and prove me now. If I have not opened you the windows of heaven and pour you out my blessings from heaven, that you will not have enough room to receive them. We also discover from scriptures that kingdom promotion sacrifices is ordained to keep our heaven open. Haggai chapter 1. He said, This will say the time is not come that the house of the Lord should be built. So they went to their own seal houses. Is it time for you? My people to live in your houses and my house is lying in ruin. Therefore, you look for much, it became little. You bring it in, I blow it up, I blow it up. Why said the Lord goes to my house that you are not mine for? Go to the mountain and bring wood and build this house. And I will take pleasure in it. Otherwise, your heaven will remain short. Your heart will stop bringing forth fruit. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 to 13. So, lack of required response to kingdom promotion opportunities can short the heaven. The heaven over your life will never be short yeah. as we take responsibility. Please know the following. Empowerment for wealth is not a promise but a covenant. And until one's part is played, he or she is not a candidate for empowerment. Empowerment for wealth is not a promise, but a covenant. And until one's part is played, it's not a candidate for empowerment for wealth. If you can't bring my covenant on the day and not deny it, forget it. You can't alter my covenant. You can't commit me to empower you on your terms.
You can only commit my integrity on my terms. That's what God is saying. See, it my harvest is my anchor town. It is my covenant with anyone who is interested. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21, you can't break my covenant. And you can stop the day and the night from exchanging position, you can't break it. Interestingly, and this is good news, anyone can start from where he is. Because God's commandments are not grievous. Anyone can start from where he is. That widow brought her two might, and Jesus said she gave the greatest. And what does that mean? Amen. She has taught the heart of God and her explosion of blessings is just here. From her two might. From her two might. He said to Abraham, from the place where you are, start there. 1984, our total income in church was 18,000 plus in the whole year. In the whole year. My offering was there, my sacrifice was there, and the others. So we are, that was our level, all of us. Not that that's their level. That was our level. Everybody's level then. Was 84, I mean, was 18,000 plus in the year 1984, not 1924, 1984, 1984. You can start from where you are. His commandments are not grievous. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. The title of 10 naira is one naira. Start from where you are. Don't eat the seed plus the fruit. Start from where you are. <laughs> start from where you are. I said, my God, 1985, we grew to 55,000. That was heaven came down. The Pontanega. And watch, we were not borrowing all. At that time, we were, his blessings make everywhere. God breathes on your five loaves and two fishes. It will more than enough to feed you. More than enough to feed you. More than enough to feed you. I read to Suga, a pronganeta. I made a vow against borrowing, 1981. October 4, I made a vow. A chumbikate from the wall. From the wall. I, I will bless you, let your nation, but don't let me be slow for you. Go at my pace. 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 We could not rent a house of 5,500 in 1986. I said, if the man doesn't say 5,000, let me go away. We look for another one. We couldn't. Now we are building cities around the wall. A cantenoga, a pump black crack tenorada. Is this here? Start from where you are. Stop posing to God so you don't get decomposed. God knows your size. Don't pose as you are something else. He knows your size. You made 20 naira profit. Two naira is tight. There is no argument. When you miss your tight, you are surcharged. The blessing is cut short, and then you are surcharged with what remains. So you get poured up by the day. But not you. Amen. Not your family. Amen. Not your household. Amen. Don't play smart with God. He knows all about you, including what you never know. He knows your thoughts are far off which you don't know. He knows when you are calculating it and you know you're subjecting to various factors. The fuel that took me to church, the transportation that increased, they are all part of my tithe. Well done. You have given your tithe to the driver. And to the filling station. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> no. There's a man by name J.C. Penny. I shared the testimony during the week of spiritual emphasis. God was blessing him. He started tithing and God was lifting him. At the time, he said, ah, this tithe is too much. He started cutting it down. And God was cutting down his business. Small, 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 until he went down bankrupt. He said, you are the one happening. Then he recovered himself and started tightening from bankruptcy. Tight his way up. Don't joke with God, my friend. Don't. When next you meet God, ask him, when I miss my tight last, if I ever did. But what I see in my hand today, sir, what I see God do, today is my tightening day, the first Sunday after the end of the month. What I see in my hand, 
what I see in my hand today is far beyond my dream of blessings without looking for it. God wants to decorate your life. Amen. You know, if this were a church, a fundraising church, you will know now. You will know. You know, so if we will raise funds, what the fund they have already, they raise fund. God, their church is raising fund. It's a fundraising platform. They raise fund. Uh, we are going to have a convention. Okay, what are you doing with your offering? <laughs> that you are doing convention and you need to raise an offering. Abba, don't convey. Amen. <laughs> Don't come back. <laughs> My God. Tens of thousands draw their pay on a monthly basis. We have never struggled to do it. I never turn a gallop and brought us on. There's a grace upon this church. That flows from the head of Aaron. The giving grace that makes financial giants. It's your turn for a change of story. It's your turn for a change of story. It's your turn for a change of story. I'm in my prophetic realm this morning, and I'd like you to please grab this. God has come down for your change of story. Let him in. Allow him to come in. Allow him to come in. Next thing to note, the covenant will continue to work as long as we are engaging with the terms of the covenant of work. It will continue to work. It will never stop. But when we stop, it stops. David said to Solomon, my son, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, we forsake him. And Solomon forsook him and God forsook Solomon. Stay on, my friend. Stay on, my friend. Abraham stayed on 100 years. God called him 75 his obedience was sustained till 175. And God has blessed him in everything. 100 years long walk with God. <laughs> Many are getting to it this morning. 100 years long walk with God. David was 17, a man with a heart for God. <laughs> and he went to heaven at 70. He was a giver till his last breath. Now because of my affection with the house of my God, after I transferred the throne to Solomon, after I transferred the throne to Solomon, he said, I've given of all my private treasure. My God. Mm. Now today, Jesus holds the key of David in heaven. Authority. Come and say authority. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. Solomon walked with him for 20 years. He backed out. And vanity upon vanity all became vanity. Solomon ended up a miserable man. Tenori, Shakano Brahad, Makwanos. Wake up and receive grace for a sustainable covenant work with God. Amen. This does not bank on what to receive, it banks on what to give. You will stop receiving when you stop giving. You will stop receiving when you stop giving. Someone said to his son in law to be, he said, how much do you give? The son-in-law said, the son-in-law to be said, well, um, sometimes I give 10, sometimes 20. Ah, he said, you are an emotional giver. I won't let my daughter marry anyone who is not a giver because it will bring him to poverty. <laughs> Amen. He said, that means you give well when it's going great. You go down when it's going down. And that's why you stay down. He took it. And help us open. He was first angry. I mean, what, what concerns you about what I give? But he happens to be a man of God and he has seen it. He was an emotional giver for a while before God stepped in and set him up. Have a schedule for your giving, my friend. Have a schedule. Have a schedule. Not five naira today, then two naira tomorrow. That's emotional giving. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. As God has blessed everyone, even so let him give. You can't be giving what you are giving when you are ten times below where you are now. And expect it's not a honorable seed, it's an insult. It's an insult. It's an insult. 
Somebody told this change. Yeah. We have never gone down once in this ministry financially. No. I've never known a downward trend once in my finances. Year in, year out. Awesome. Our consistency in covenant practice guarantees a stable platform for financial fortune. Stop toying with your tight. Those things will continue to be tight for you. Allow God to open the heavens over your life and it will be what to celebrate all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. We need grace to sustain our covenant engagement. So we don't Give up in the process. The kingdom of God says when a man should cast a seed into the ground and should sleep and wake and the seed should grow, he knows not how. He knows not how. Stop asking how. Just keep doing what God says. And he begins to prove himself one face after another. One face after another. One face after another. One face after another. Welcome to your realm of financial fortune. Paul said, as you abandon everything in knowledge, in faith, and in love for us, see that you abandon in this grace also. There is no substitute to sowing and reaping for anyone that truly desires to work in his bad right of financial fortune. There is no substitute. Church membership, zero. Service group engagement, zero. Say whatever about so that shall you reap. You don't so finance, you can't refinance it. So wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. The word I don't have will not come from your mouth again. Because every time you say I don't have, what you have this diminishes. I don't have it diminishes. I don't have it diminishes. Our kitchen people at home, when I say I need something, they say it's plenty in the house. It's plenty means we need to replenish the stuff. Not that it's finished. But you, every day is finished. It's finished. It's finished. Pepper, finished. Tomato, finished. Fish, finished. Every Finish many things in your life without knowing. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. We should also know that the covenant that I'm passed for wed does not answer to revelation and declaration. Oh, yes. Yes, it came from the poverty. To riches. That does not bring riches. You have the revelation, but you miss the application. So you can't have the manifestation. You miss the application. Revelation without application equals frustration. It does not answer to believing and receiving. You believe, you prove that you believe by obeying, and then you receive. There is always something missing in the equation. Without application, declaration cannot deliver. Revelation cannot deliver. Now, without obedience, faith is important. It doesn't answer to prayer and fasting. You can't live from the field where you have not sown any seed. It doesn't answer to confession and possession. You can't possess what you have not invested in. Always remember, the anchor law is given and receiving. As we round up, we understand that serving God and the of his kingdom with our resources is gateway to a world of financial fortune. God first is a rule. God first. Every other thing lies behind it. God first. God will only entrust his riches into the hands of those he can trust to use such words for his purpose. Luke 16 verse 11. If you have not been faithful in your righteous mammon, who shall commit to your hands the true riches? The true riches. Every form of wealth on the earth is temporal. The true riches goes from generation to generation. 
from generation to generation after the order of Abraham. From generation to generation. So there are people here today that for generations after you will never smell poverty. By the quality of your covenant work with God, we never smell poverty. They will identify you wherever you are in your household as that prosperous family. You will be helpers of others. You will be sustainers of those that are in need. Can he trust to promote his kingdom with his will? Then he can entrust in your hand. Can he trust to see be paying your tithe diligently, truthfully, where you are 100 times where you are today, if you can't trust, it won't get you there. Who will commit to your trust is who riches when you have not proved it with the temporary riches in your hands. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. I'm waiting for the day, and I know it's near here, where someone will come up to me and say, look, sir, how many churches do you want to build in the Nigeria Republic? And I call them and they say, oh, so, so oh, so, okay, we take care of that. Someone else will come and say, how many churches are we building in Australia? My God, God is awesome. Keep dreaming. Kingdom advancement dreams, God will keep enlarging your course of blessings. Amen. That's the way it works. We also must recognize that our financial, our giving is not a financial donation. To help, help in code, to help God. But a spiritual transaction that unleashes heavenly other blessings on our lives. <laughs> no idea than altar. And God smelt a good savor in heaven. In heaven. And broke the curse on the ground. Abraham ran an altar of sacrifice on Mount Moriah. And God spoke to him twice from heaven. From heaven. So it answered in heaven. Genesis 22, verse 15 to 22, verse 15 to 18. It answered in heaven. Every of our giving is a spiritual transaction that answers in heaven and commits God to unleash his blessings upon our life on the earth. He said, God smite a good savor in Philippians chapter 4, 15 to 19, and he will supply all our needs. Solomon had an altar, and God answered in heaven. What do you want me to do for you? So if they are spiritual transactions, take your mind off a donation mentality. God will never need donation. God will never need your donation or my donation. For what? Of his fullness we have all received. What have we that we have not received? In First Chronicles chapter um, 29 and verse 14, he said, and of thine have we given thee. So there is nothing we give but that it came from him. As God has blessed everyone, so let him give. So it's coming from God, and we're giving it back to God to acknowledge that we, got, we saw his blessings. Can I hear your amen? amen? Please, let a donation mentality clear off your mind. Only a beggar needs to donations. Therefore, remain committed to serving God in the name of his kingdom to sustain the grace for financial fortune. For my house through prosperity shall be spread abroad. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Remain committed to tighten your income in order to remain under an open heaven order of blessings. Remain committed to worshiping God. Honoring God with your worship seed. Honoring God. You are honoring God. Worship seed. So give what is honorable. So your gift will not be rejected. Give according to his blessings on your life. Not where you were 10 years ago. Your life won't go backward. As God is advancing you, keep demonstrating that in your honorable seed to him from time to time. Expect all causes to be averted. That is your right under the covenant. The first sacrifice that went to God God averted the course on the ground. So when your tithing, your giving goes to God, courses over your life are averted. No course shall have a hold on your life anymore. Yeah. Expect to remain protected as you walk in the covenant. Lift up your right hand, everybody. 
and give God thanks. If light came your way to this morning, give God thanks. If light came your way this morning, give God thanks. If you caught anything from heaven this morning, give God thanks. Ramele Roy, the Seklad Yalisha, Maten Clodi Balatu Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for light. Thank you for light. Now, receive grace to reposition. Receive grace to reposition. Receive grace to reposition. Receive grace to reposition. No explanation will be a substitute for covenant engagement. No situation will be acceptable to God for non-alignment. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. No matter the economic heat on the earth, the covenant will exempt you. Amen. No matter how horrible things may get on this earth, you shall be exempted. Amen. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you are in this service this morning and you are not born again yet, and you want to say, Jesus, save my soul, I'd like to pray with you. Everything we are saying begins with new birth. When you become a member of his family, you can be a partaker of his inheritance. Only members of a family partake of the inheritance of the Father. So if you are here this morning, you want to give your life to Christ, but far more than that, you want to make heaven at the end of, of your life. You want to live an overcomer's life on earth. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive my sins. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive my sins. Please stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive my sins this morning. Stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive my sins this morning. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Many more are standing up wherever you are. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there. You are not coming to the front. We don't have the time right now. Please stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to say, Jesus, I'm returning back home. I've wandered away from you. I want to return home. You are there this morning, Jesus. I want to dedicate my life to you. Stand to your feet also. And I pray for the two groups at the same time. God cannot start a double dealing. A double-minded person to say, in all his ways, let him not think he shall receive anything from God. You want to get back on God's side. Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. A young man was traveling to one village in Ogun State here for medicine, for charm. Charm for fortune. Because his life was down. No job, nothing. But God, by his intervention, directed him. He missed his road and they landed him at Canaan Gate. He said, I've been hearing of Canaan land. Let me enter. As he entered, his phone went dead. Fully charged phone. So he couldn't reach the native doctor that he was lost. It was a Wednesday attended service and got saved. He stayed back. By Saturday, he got a medical job on phone. What he was going to pay nonsense money for. Jesus did it for him as he got saved. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, you better stand up and break off from the enemy and release your destiny. Now all of us who are standing, lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this simple prayer after me with your heads bowed. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. Don't stand with them, say it along with them. Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me on the third day you rose again, that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I therefore proclaim you today. I proclaim you today as my Lord, my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I shall serve you to the end of time. By your grace, 
I shall leave the overcomer's life and by your grace I shall make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you Jesus for saving me. Amen. Be blessed. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all evils all the days of your life. Grace to live the overcomer's life and make heaven at the end of your journey. Receive it right now. Grace to be on God's side till the end of time. Receive it right now. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please complete your forms and let all the officials ensure that you collect those forms and pass them on uh, to the required locations. Also, you have a card with you Called, we love you card. Take that card after this service and then through any of the major entrances you find new converse tent. You get in there, submit that card and they'll give you some gift items from the church that will help in building your faith. Don't miss that for anything and devote to be there. Jesus is Lord. Osha, could you please make available to everyone in church uh, prophetic focus for the month, biblical covenant and powers for wealth, uh, why every winner should be an active member of WSF for one to him that's alone, get connected. Why should we continue to gather souls into church? When you know why you are doing what you are doing, you are self-motivated to keep doing it. So we have those three items for us this morning. And expect your next level of grace from heaven that will cause your life to glow. Hear me. In church growth lies the glow of every engaging believer. In church growth lies the glow of every engaging believer. Stay committed. Be dedicated in engaging with the ongoing prophetic weeks of harvest. delight in paying the way for new converts, both your new converts, new converts of the church, at the various loading bays across the, across the city. 